Gandhi, Dr. King, dramatized and defined the technique of nonviolence, and yet he also said that the only alternative to fear is violence, and that if that were the alternative, he would have to choose violence. Do you subscribe to that judgment of Gandhi, or would you disavow violence under any condition? Well, I think I would have to somewhat interpret Gandhi at this point. I don't think he was setting forth violence as, a, as an alternative. I think he was emphasizing, uh, or, or rather trying to refute an all too prevalent fallacy. And that is that the persons who use uh, the method of nonviolence are actually the weak persons, persons who don't have the weapons of violence, persons who are afraid. And I think that is what Gandhi was attempting to refute. Now, in that instance, I would agree with Gandhi that if the only alternative to violence, uh, uh, to fear, uh, is violence and vice versa, then I would say fight. But it isn't the only alternative. And that is the one point that Gandhi was trying to bring out. It seems to me that there are three ways that oppressed people can deal with their oppression. What are they, Dr. King? Well, one is to rise up in uh, open violence, in physical violence. And some persons have used that method, persons who have been oppressed. But I think the danger of that method is its futility. I feel that violence creates many more social problems than it solves. May I interrupt you there, Dr. King? There are today certainly people who are forced to endure a kind of injustice that neither you nor even Gandhi in his time had ever seen. Uh, for example, would you regard the martyrs of Hungary's rebellion a year ago as misguided men and having used violence? I admire freedom fighters wherever they are, but I still believe that nonviolence is the strongest approach. I think that would apply to the Hungarian situation also. I don't think it's limited to a particular locality. I think it uh, should apply in every situation in the world where individuals seek to break a loose from the bondage of colonialism or from some totalitarian regime or from the system which we confront in America. You truly believe then that nonviolence is the sole, the universal answer to injustice and oppression? Very and definitely. Lasting answer. Very definitely. I feel that um, nonviolence, organized, I should say, organized uh, nonviolent resistance is the most powerful weapon weapon that oppressed people can use in breaking a loose from the bondage of oppression. Now, the other method that one might use is that of resignation or acquiescence. But I think that is just as bad as violence, because non-cooperation with evil is as much a moral obligation as is cooperation with good. You make a difference, a distinction between passive resistance and nonviolent resistance, is that it? Well, I, I think that can be something of a semantical problem. Uh, if passive resistance means uh, just passively accepting violence or injustice, if it means uh, cowardice and stagnant passivity, then there is a difference because nonviolent resistance th does resist. It is dynamically active. It is passive uh, physically, but it is strongly active spiritually. In a sense, would you, would you regard it as moving into the Christian philosophy, too? You mean the doctrine of turn the other cheek to regard as positive rather than passive? I think it is positive. I think uh, very definitely if it is used properly and accepted with a proper attitude, it is a very strong method. It is a method of the strong man, not the weak man. Dr. King... The editor of the local newspaper here uh, proposed an editorial the other day that I ask you to reconcile, as he put it, your passive resistance philosophy with your satisfaction, which you've expressed very clearly, over the use of bayonet force in the Little Rock situation. Well, I'll put that question to you. What is your answer to this editor? Sir? Well, I, I might say that uh, I did uh, back the president in his... Uh, action in Little Rock, Arkansas. I think it is quite regrettable and unfortunate that uh, young high, high school students have to go to school under the protection of federal troops. 
But I think it is even more unfortunate that a public official, through irresponsible actions, uh, leaves the President of the United States with no other alternative. So I did back the President, and I sent him a telegram commending him. Now, your main question is, and the question of the editor, uh, of, the editor of our local newspaper here, is how does this jibe with yes. my whole uh, philosophy of nonviolence? How does it? I believe firmly in nonviolence, as I have already said. But at the same time, I am not an anarchist. Now, some pacifists are anarchists following Tolstoy. But I don't go that far. I, I believe in the intelligent use of police force. I think uh, one who believes in nonviolence must recognize the dimensions of evil within human nature. And there is a danger that one can indulge in a sort of superficial optimism, thinking man is all good. Man does not only have the greater capacity for goodness, but there is also the potential for evil. And I think of that throughout my whole philosophy, and I'm, I try to be realistic at that point. So that I believe in the intelligent use of police force, and I think that is all we have in Little Rock. It's not an army fighting against a nation or a race of people. It is just police force seeking to enforce the law of the land. And this would be your answer to the editor. To explore another facet of the Little Rock situation, are you satisfied with President Eisenhower's performance on the racial issue? Well, I guess to answer that question, I would need to make a general statement. And that is that uh, the Negro has been betrayed at many points by both political parties. I don't want to make this a party situation. I don't think either party can boast of having clean hands in this area. It, uh, it is my conviction that both parties have failed to take the strong stand in the area of civil rights that they could take. Having called down a plague on the houses of both parties, do you, are you satisfied with President Eisenhower's performance in this particular situation, Dr. King? Well, with the Little Rock situation, yes. I, I think uh, the President should be commended for the positive and forthright stand that he is now taking in the area of civil rights in general and in the situation in Little Rock, Arkansas in particular. But you are dissatisfied with the overall performance of both the President's party and of the Democratic Party. Oh, yes. I think both parties could improve, and I think both parties must come to the point that they see the moral issues involved rather than making a political football out of the civil rights issue. The implication being you think they still are doing that? At points, yes. 